What's going on today, people? This is the Jewish Giraffe, back again with another video. Today, I will be reviewing uh, Beta the Electromagnet Warrior. Um, so, this is a card that is the level 33 Yugi Moto reward, um, and it is going to be one of the more pivotal cards for Magnet Warriors, but I will get into that in just a second. So, Beta the Electromagnet Warrior, it's an Earth type monster, as they all are. It's a super rare, uh, it's got three stars. And it's a rock, and it's got really cool art, actually. I, I really like the art for this card, but that's not very important. What's important is the is the effect. If this card is normal or special summoned, you can add one level 4 or lower Magnet Warrior monster from your deck to your hand, except Beta the Electric Magnet Warrior. You can only use the effect of this once per turn. During your opponent's turn, you can tribute this card, special summon one level 4 Magnet Warrior monster from your deck. This is a quick effect. So, going over everything on this card real quick, I'm going to talk about some pros and cons, I'm going to talk about some strats, then I'm going to show you what cards go with it. From there, I'll show some uh, the deck I've made. I actually made two decks, but I accidentally deleted one, I don't want to go remake it. And then I'm going to show you a replay, um, but we'll get into it. So, some pros on this real first. Uh, a pro of this is that uh, when it is normal or special summoned, you get to add another Magnet Warrior to your hand. So, in a Magnet Warrior deck, this is pivotal because drawing out your cards and getting them in the graveyard is perfect. Uh, this is also great because you summon this, and it basically gives you Delta the Magnet Warrior if you don't already have one, so you can summon it on the next turn. Additionally, uh, when you tribute this card on your opponent's turn, since it's... Well, one of the main cons for this card is that it's got low attack and low defense, 1500 and 1500, um, so that leaves it, leaves it open to a lot. You can tribute it on your opponent's turn, already putting one card in the graveyard for Delta's effect. Um, and when that happens, say you're being attacked by... There's some pretty common cards right now that are at 1800, such as Red Eyes Wyvern, we've got Fire King Avatar Yaksha, we've got Heavy Knight of the Flame. You can tribute this card and then bring in a Gamma in defense position since you special summon it, and then they can't get over that if they only have those kinds of cards out. So it's really good. There's also some... Uh, if they've only got, say... Uh, oh, I don't know, Sergeant Electro is out on the field, and they've got no back row, which would never happen in a balanced deck, but still. Um, <laughs> you can bring out your other Beta the Magnet Warrior, or you can bring out uh, your Delta the Magnet Warrior if you want to start, like, if you want to just attack into it so you can destroy both, and then bring out your Valkyrian, whatever strategy you want to do. Um, another thing with this is that it's three stars, so it works with uh, Delta's effect, which is really nice. Um, Another con for this, besides the low attack and defense, is that you only get one. If there were three of these, I think that they would be standard in Magnet Warrior decks, or I'd, I'd at least run two. I think just one isn't enough. Um, the last con I wanted to talk about is that Magnet Warriors as a deck and as a whole right now are not very good. Uh, they don't swarm the board as easily as other decks. They're pretty reliant on just their own base attack and defense since they are normal monsters, and they peak at 1700 for attack with beta and 1800 defense with gamma they are not by any means powerful and they are not by any means defensive either and in this in this meta like defenses are such like they're so negligible uh you want strong offense and this deck is not very offensively powerful so i'm going to these are some cards that i think work well with uh magnet warriors there's only one of each because i'm going to talk about each of them individually um and then i'm going to show you a deck for that. So Valkyrian is the card that you want most of all. You get one from leveling up uh, Yugi, Yugi Muto as well, but uh, I, you you can have access to more depending on the previous events. I have two. I would only re really recommend running one since the entire point of the Magnet Warrior deck, the really only point you have since the monsters are so weak, is uh, get out your Valkyrian swing for game. That, that is entirely it. You really are there. If you lose your Valkyrian, there's no way you're going to be able to get out a second one. It's just there's, unless you're running some sort of 30 card deck. Um, there's one other thing I want to talk about in this as well. Um, I don't have a Mega Rock Dragon, but if I did, I would put it in here because Mega Rock Dragon could work, but it's not as pivotal as cards such as Delta, which is the one of the key members of any Magnet Warrior deck. Uh, you should know this effect by now. This card's been out for a while. If it's normal special summon, you can send one level 4 or lower Magnet Warrior from your deck to the graveyard. Uh, pretty much you want to always send your Alpha the Magnet Warrior uh, to the graveyard. Um, if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can banish three level 4 or lower Magnet Warrior monsters. So that includes your new Beta the Electromagnet Warrior. Um, 
Special Summon 1 Valkyrian from your hand or deck, ignoring its special summoning conditions, which makes this thing a whole lot easier to summon, so of course you want to run three of these in your deck. Uh, I mentioned Sphere Kribo because it's great for things like there's a lot of Phoenix running around right now, so they summon their Phoenix, your back row pops, they go in for the attack, say you've got a beta on the field, you Sphere Kribo, swing next turn, your 1700 gets over at 1600 defense, there you go. Um, I only mentioned Guardian Statue because it's another rock type and it works well with Attack the Moon, but I also mention it because I don't think you should be running Guardian, running Guardian Statue in this. I think it takes up a space where another uh, Magna Warrior could go, and it just makes getting Valkyrian on the field a little bit more difficult. And if you're really running uh, Guardian Statue, you're taking away from the Magna Warrior uh, entirety of this. Then you've got Gamma, Beta, and Alpha, which are the key members. You pretty much have to run one of each. Um, I think running... No more than, well, of course you only want to run one alpha. I'd say run two to three betas, depending on your deck, since it's got the highest attack, and then one to two gammas, because it's got that nice defense. Um, other cards, so that, that's pretty much it for monsters. I have the skill my monster card set up here, because if you have six level four or lower monsters, you have a greater chance of starting with one, and I'll show that, because that's the deck that I have. It'll be the next thing I show. Um, another good skill for this, there's always restart. Um, if you've got the right thing set up for it, if you've got a right setup, you can always run Balance. Um, I did try a Last Gamble deck, I didn't think it worked out super well because it's still not super easy to get out your Valkyrian, even though you are sending things to the graveyard, so it works just as well as the My Monster Cards deck, and spoilers, they don't work very well at all. Um, another card to mention is Tribute to the Doomed, because you get to discard one card, then target one monster on the field, destroy it. This is great if your opponent has like a... Um, Red Eyes, Black Dragon out in the field, you go for a Tribute to the Doomed. Uh, there's one thing I did want to mention on this. So, if you activate this card, you discard one card. So, say you discard um, one of your, like a Gamma, or say, say you discard a Delta and you already have three in the graveyard. So you discard this and you target your opponent's Red Eyes, Black Dragon. Say they've got one Champion, Champion's Vigilance, they're obviously going to Champion's Vigilance, the Tribute to the Doomed. However, you still put the Delta in the graveyard, which is pivotal because then you'll still be able to summon Valkyrie and the Magna Warrior, and there's nothing they can do about that. I mean, they can't, they already can't special or uh, um, Champions Vigilance a special summon, but still. Um, other cards I want to talk about: Super Rush Headlong is really nice because it's a nice uh, defensive piece. Uh, your Magna Warriors are not going to stay out on the field very long, and this is just going to let you live a little bit longer. But I think it's inferior to Enemy Controller. Because enemy controller allows you to tribute your monsters, which puts more magnet warriors in the graveyard, which means getting out Valkyrian just a little bit easier. Um, Wonder Balloons is really nice because you can send any number of cards from your hand, so you're pretty much going to send any defense pieces you don't need, any spells, traps, and you're going to send any um, magnet warriors you don't need to the graveyard, and you're going to lower your opponent's attack. So you put one balloon counter on this card, your opponent's Red Eyes Wyvern is now lower than your beta, and you're going to be able to swing over it. Um, order to charge is okay. Or the order charge, order to charge, isn't super good in this meta anymore. Um, with all the things that are running around, there's so many special summons in the graveyard right now. So it, it just, it's not super great. I would only recommend running one or two of these because you are also running around with at least three deltas. If you're running this, you got the one beta, you've got your Valkyrian, and you've got your Sphere Kribo, assuming you are running that. So you're pretty much only running around with your betas, your alpha, and your gamma. So, in, in best case scenario, you're running five of those, so five and three order to charges, it just doesn't add up, so I'd run pretty much only one. Um, additionally, <coughs> excuse me, um, anti-magic arrows are really good in this deck, because if you have your Valkyrian out, um, this thing is great, but it doesn't stop any sort of back row, so say they've got mirror wall, say they've got enemy controller, etc. Um, it's really good to have anti-magic arrows to get over that. You could also run storm and desert twist or not desert twister uh what's the trap card i can never remember the name um wild tornado yeah you can run the storm wild tornado combo uh and get rid of some of your opponent's cards but that's more of a last gamble deck than anything so in the last gamble deck i would recommend running three storms and two to three wild tornadoes i only have the one but still um attack the moon is another good card because uh whenever you're battle position of a rock type monster is changed you get to target one spell trap card your opponent controls to destroy that target it's good for getting rid of other cards but it does clog up your back row a little bit and it's not super pip or it's not super amazing because you're gonna have to be changing your own battle positions or hoping they have enemy controllers or windstorms or things like that so it's not the best but it's not the worst either i would really only recommend wa running one of those um additionally i meant to put windstorm in this trap card list 
but I forgot to do that, which is bad on me. I would absolutely run Windstorm because it's a really nice piece. Uh, Mirror Wall is going to be your new best friend. If you have multiple of these, please run all of them. Uh, it's great. People can't swing, or it's harder for them to swing over your uh, Magnet Warriors if, they've, if you've got this nice Mirror Wall. Uh, it's only going to be one turn thing though, so I mean that's just the, the downside of Mirror Wall. Uh, Magical Arm Shield is great because it's easy to get a Magnet Warrior out in the field with mon my monster cards. You get to just summon one, you're good. Uh, other decks are really swarming the field, so say they've got two uh, Red Eyes Black Dragons on the field, you've got your Magnet Warrior, they attack, you get to pull one over, they attack that, bam, they're gone. It's good. It doesn't work in every scenario though because, I mean, there's always other cards that can work around it. Um, Rising Energy is good because it lets you boost up one of your Magnet Warriors, which I think is ideal. Um, and it lets you put another card in the graveyard so you can discard another Magnet Warrior, which is pivotal for getting your Delta out, destroying it, and getting your Valkyrian. Zing Zen Hu, I only mentioned because uh, you need to clock up your opponent's back row, or you can clock up your opponent's back row with it, and then they can't activate it, which is really nice. Don't run this if you are running the um, Last Gamble deck, though. It's not going to work. And Ultimate Providence is actually a really nice key card. I would run maybe one, maybe two of these in it, because if, say, you have your Valkyrian in, or no, you have, uh, like, your, uh, any sort of, I don't know, let's say, you, let's say you've got an Alpha in your hand, and you've got an Ultimate Providence set, they activate any sort of monster effect, you get to activate Ultimate Providence, and you already get another thing to discard. I think that this is one of the better cards you can run, because it's also countering a lot of things that your opponent could bring out. Um, and it's going to counter a lot of your opponent's options. Um, I didn't test it out in the one deck that I had, but I think it would be a great addition. So let's look at the Magnet deck that I've been running. Um, so here it is. It, I, I'm honestly, Magnet Warriors are too slow for everything. You're, they're not super great. They're super slow, and I lost a lot of games into this. Um, if I was going to change this around, I would maybe take out one of the enemy controllers or the Super Rush Headlong, and I would actually put in an Ultimate Providence because I think it'd work a little bit better just to clog up your, your opponent's back row more. I also only recently changed, um, this was, well, at the beginning it was two Super Rush Headlongs, two Wonder Bloons, two enemy controllers, and two Anti-Magic Arrows. And then I believe there was no Windstorm there. So everything's changed around with this deck. Um, it, it's been around. I played maybe 10 games with it. It's changed around a bunch, and I think th this is the one I had when I actually started winning a couple games. Uh, Tribute to the Bedoomed actually came in clutch in like two games, but I didn't save any replays. Um, I only saved one replay for this deck, actually, and I'm only going to go over that one single replay um, because it's the only one where it actually showed off um, what needed to, or what this whole deck could do. And the, my opponent is not my best opponent, but it, it is versus a Toons deck. Um, yeah, and it's not only a Toon deck, it's the only 30 card Toon deck I've ever seen. But this guy drew the nuts, so that's why I'm showing it. Because if he drew a complete brick, like I wouldn't be showing it, but still. Um, so he's got, well I've got a 20 card deck, my monster cards, he's got a 30 card deck. He does go for the restart, um, and I was just astounded that someone run, was running on with a 30 card deck. Uh, in this meta still. So we do draw a really nice starting hand, um, and we're just going to summon our uh, Beta the Electromagnet Warrior, and we're going to set a Mirror Wall because that's the best play, just judging by what's going on. Additionally, we're going to use his effect to pull out a Delta. This, the, the main reason I'm showing off this is because it might not be the best duel, uh, but we'll, you'll see. Um, it does show all the key pieces of Beta, which is what I wanted, and it does uh, end in a win, which I mean... It's gonna end in a win. If you're watching one of my videos, it's always a win. Um, so he draws the nuts pretty much by uh, getting a plant pathfinder. Uh, he has the soul exchange. So this is where you activate it, Beta's effect. Um, you're gonna tribute this. So then you can pull out whatever card you want. Uh, I pulled out a Gamma here, I think. Um, yeah, I pulled out a Gamma because I was unsure of what he was gonna do. Um, he does have the Tune Kingdom. And I was thinking, okay, he can't tribute now, so I'm fine. Except he does have the, <laughs> he does have the mermaid, and he does bring out um, the summon skull. So here's where the plays get interesting. I am going to, th this is going to seem like a very weird play, and I'm going to explain it. 
I know I can't target him with a with a um, tribute to the doomed, but he's going to be able to swing over me soon. So I'm going to activate Delta's effect to put a beta in there. So that's two magnet warriors in the grave, and I'm going to discard my own beta to destroy the Delta. So that puts three in the graveyard because beta goes in the graveyard before Delta. Uh, that removes from play three, and I get a Valkyrian on turn three. It, it, this deck sometimes works, and this is one of those examples when it does. So I'm going to swing into him. Uh, it's key that you do do this because you want him to take that damage. Um, and here's where it gets interesting. So multiple mirror walls would be pivotal or would be vital in this deck if I had them. So he's going to swing. I'm not going to windstorm. I'm going to mirror wall so I can lower his attack. Uh, pay for it next turn and then swing for game as you will see. So he gets lowered down to 1250, uh, we take that damage, we're now at 2750, he ends his turn. Um, we are going to pay for the mirror wall, because we have to, and now that he has 1250, we're going to be able to bring out uh, our beta, which it's lucky that we drew it, but we didn't exactly need it, because we get to attack the Valkyrian. I know this guy doesn't have a Sphere Karibo, I just know he doesn't, and even if he does, um, we have the Windstorm so we can save ourselves for another turn. Um, and we're going to be able to swing for game right here, because beta attacks and that destroys his summon skull. So yeah, uh, this is one of the few good wins I had. I had, like, I don't know, a couple wins where I wasn't very happy with it, and I had a lot of losses. This deck pretty much auto-loses to Red Eyes, it almost auto-loses to Phoenix, it auto-loses to a lot of stuff. So, in conclusion, Magnet Warriors are not a good deck, they are not a meta deck by any means, they are a fun deck more than anything. Uh, Last Gamble is probably better than my monster cards, but if you are trying to run a Magna Warrior deck, pick up Beta. It's been pretty nice, and it's made it just a little bit better. So, oops, that is not the deck I want to click on, but that is a fun deck. Um, yeah, so if you want to go run this deck, I would recommend doing it. There's a lot of other pieces that you could do, I'm sure. So in the comments down below, maybe I forgot to mention a certain card, maybe I forgot to bring up a certain uh, ability or character that you could use for this, just let me know. Uh, if you have any other ideas, or if you've made this deck work and there's something I didn't consider, also let me know for that. So, thanks for watching everyone. This is the Jewish Draft signing off. In conclusion, beta's okay? Don't, don't, don't try to make this meta.